Welcome back to another high energy episode of Mojo Talk Radio. I'm your host, Pamela Sullivan, bringing you more deep dives so you can spiral up into the best life that you can possibly live. And today I'm incredibly, incredibly excited to have this beautiful woman with me today. Why? Because she's going to be bringing us a really powerful topic around image. Now, what does that possibly have to do with Mojo and taking deep dives? And I'm going to tell you everything, 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 everything. And when this woman was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, it was all I can do to contain myself because I've been having this thought for some time now, and I didn't know who can possibly help me with it. And we'll get more into that after she comes on and um, shares, starts sharing her story and her journey with us. So Char Dobbs, thank you so much for joining us here on Mojo Talk Radio. Thank you for having me, Pamela. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. <laughs> now, Char, please share with us in the Mojo Talk Radio audience who you are in the world and how you share your wisdom out to your audience. Yes, so my name is Shara Dobbs. I own Char Style and Image Consulting Company, and we focus on helping primarily professional women show up in life and business as their authentic selves. And I know that can mean a lot of different things, but really focusing on helping um, the working woman rediscover who she is um, in the form of how she wants to show up. How does she want to? Um, you know, give her message, reflect who she is to the world in the form of her personal image. And it's so fun and interesting of how it's so interconnected to our everyday lives, our business, um, and just how we feel about ourselves as well. And so I'm excited to dive into that more today. Beautiful. Now, Char, one of the interesting things about you is that you have a science background. You come from engineering. So I thought it was really interesting. <laughs> that you're taking your scientific mind and training and you're bringing it into the world of style and image. Tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Yes. So, um, you know, I really feel like I'm one of those true right brain, left brain people. <laughs> so I did work in um, engineering for a while before I switched over to my business. But honestly, you know, it was like your why, like that personal story, my personal experience with clothing um, from when I was young and to, you know, it actually in my career and the power that it has. And when I started my business, I definitely wanted to stay very connected to women who work like the professional space, the entrepreneur space, because that part is really near and dear to my heart as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just translated very beautifully. And I support women in this space to help them be the powerful um, women that they are you know, and be able to embrace that, stand in it, um, and really show it to the world and honestly show it to themselves. So um, as far as like bringing that, you know, that scientific background, I am a stickler for like efficiency and like logistic, like how are things working, you know, and bringing that to the table as well. Um, because honestly, what an entrepreneur, um, not an entrepreneur, I'm sorry, um, an engineer does is really just solve problems. So I feel like I'm just taking that tool set and, you know, use it in terms of a creative way of solving those problems, but in a very relatable space. So I feel like my clients are really able to connect with me in a different way than they may have before, because I do have that business background. Nice, nice. I, I, I was fascinated by that because you don't really don't see those two things correlating. You know, yes, you're a scientist, you're an engineer, you got to put some clothes on, but to actually dive in. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I thought it was fascinating. So thank you for sharing that. Now I have a little bit of a an eye meltdown right now right now. I don't know what was happening. Um uh, I'm on camera and I don't you know, it's okay, people. These things happen. Right. You get something in your eye. Mm -hmm. Probably bad makeup, but that's okay. <laughs> Maybe you can help me with that later too. So really right. good mascara that doesn't drive you crazy. Yes. So, actually I just put on one that I love. It's mm -hmm. um Yes, we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking, I am looking, and I'm sure other people are looking too. So let's dive right into the meat and potatoes of what you're here to share with us. And it comes around branding. And as entrepreneurs, we're always talking branding. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that the signal that we're putting out to the world is crisp, clean, and clear. And part of that branding is who we are. We show up in our business, and it's who we are. It's not just about logos and and colors and what the website looks like. 
important, mm -hmm. but it's not the entirety of our thing. Look at me. I'm just falling apart here. Okay. Excuse me, everybody. I'm just, something's gone wrong with my eye. But we will press on. <laughs> so it really was about how to rediscover you. So you put it, rediscovering brand you. So help us with that, Char. What does that mean? Yeah, so um, you, you talked about it beautifully. So usually when we start our businesses, we're so busy pouring into our business of, you know, setting up our website, our logos, and, um, you know, creating our pipelines and, you know, creating revenue and d establishing our brand voice in our business. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, um, so we pour, pour, pour into it. And then we get to a point and we, you know, kind of forget about ourselves, and, you know, you hit that wall, you're thinking, okay, I've given everything, you know, heart, soul, tears, everything into your business. And now it's time to report into yourself and rediscover who you are. Because during that process, you're changing, you're evolving, your business is growing, and you reach a point where you want to, you know, identify with what your brand is after that growth. And that's why I called it kind of rediscovering brand you because after you've done that and lived through that and the experience and the growth, who you are has changed a bit, you know, and what you want, you're in a new chapter of life. And that's just the business part. That doesn't even include the personal side of what's been happening in your life and in your business. And so we remember that, you know, it's natural to think about changing the decor in your home right? Mm -hmm. It's natural to think about updating your website every, you know, few years, but we forget to do that for ourselves in terms of, you know, how we show up, our personal image, our style, what we want. It's almost um, like we force ourselves to <laughs> like stay in this um, box almost. Like we create this box and feel like it has to be um, restrained and it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so I really help to educate and coach people to think about it's okay to allow yourself to evolve in terms of your style and your image as well and what you're wearing every day and how you want to show up for life and for your business and how the two integrates into your business so your type of your clientele the culture at your office if the culture of your team that you're building um you know what do you want to say in terms of when you show up and the brand you and thinking about those things again because like i said they continue to evolve evolve they continue to change so allow yourself to go through that but also make note of it too and you know every so often circle back and think you know what is my brand am i in alignment what are my values Am I bringing my whole self to work, which is super important as well, because then you can operate in your full power, and that is really important. You know, you said a mouthful there, and I just want to unpack a little bit of what you said, because, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, it's so mm. good, because when you said bringing all of you to your to work, to your business, mm -hmm. and what that entails. Like, one of the things I talked to you about when we first started talking was that I haven't really changed my look in forever. I went from a job to being an entrepreneur and I pulled everything with me that I knew because I thought I was so busy. There was no time to figure out what else I can do with my hair besides the school marm look that I keep doing, right? <laughs> um, what are some of the clothing choices I can make and, you know, feel really good, funky and mojo like mm -hmm. and yet still be taken right. seriously by people? And what is that? What is that brand? So what are some initial steps that we can take to discover who we actually are within our in our brand um mix yeah yeah that's great um yeah so one of the things you can do is first just start by thinking about how would you describe yourself without using a title mm. so we're accustomed nice. to saying i'm an entrepreneur i'm a wife i'm a mom i'm um, a sister, I'm a mother, I'm, you know, in describing ourselves in a category, but start with describing yourself in terms of an adjective. What are your brand words? You know, if you can just think of three that describes who you are, your personality. So I would start there. An easy um, next step would be to think can about- Can I share three with you oh, right now? Yes, 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 we do. I, I, if my brand is evolving to these three. Elegant, okay. private, and fascinating. Ooh. I elegant, like that. Private, yeah. Privately elegant and fascinating. Mm, good. 
So then, so what I would do is you take those words and you think about, are, are you in alignment? Is your life in alignment with that? Now we're getting private and fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's a Facebook question. <laughs> Right. And it could be that in a lot of areas you are, but in terms of, so we're talking about, you know, personal branding and clothing and your personal style. So what you would do is take those three words and go into your closet. When you, when you're, when you're thinking about it, does this, when I look at this piece of clothing or this item, do I reflect, does it reflect those three words? Hmm. Okay. So, and it may, and maybe there's a word that keeps coming up. Maybe it's not one of those, but maybe another one keeps coming up. But if it's totally off the mark, yeah, then that, that kind of lets you know, hmm, you know, is this a different season of my life? For instance, that the fourth word if I had to say that I would pull in would be mojo. So right. am I being mojo-esque in how I appear to the world? And what does that right. mean for me? Mojo means power. Mm -hmm. um, it means fire, it means warmth, it means color, it means bold, bodaciousness. Mm -hmm. So am mm -hmm. I showing up like that? And I would have to say not as much as I would expect myself to just yet. Right. It's letting right. go of the old me and onboarding the new me in which I want to go. Mm -hmm. So right. how would you be able to help me with that, Char? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say uh, what you pointed out, like, letting go of the old you and embracing the new you is the part that is usually the most difficult for people mm. because it's change. It's, yeah. you know, you're, you're stepping into a new space, a new chapter. So it's different. It's not as familiar. And sometimes our bodies just don't, you know, it takes us full effort to react to that. And so in terms of helping you, um, I just work with clients to so figuring out now we have to establish what does that new chapter look like? Mm. And so, so, you know, thinking about those words and how we define a style and image around those words and getting and digging deeper to get more true and helping you get to the mental, you know, shift, the mindset change that it's okay. It's okay for you to do that. So that may mean releasing some of the old and embracing some new, but that also may mean a little bit of lifestyle changes. That may mean, um, you, um, you know, shifting some habits as well and thinking about, you know, giving yourself the space to grow into that. And I say that because sometimes we, um, we create our routines of, you know, well, I grab this because I feel comfortable or I grab this because it makes me feel safe, but it doesn't make me feel like me. It doesn't make me feel my mojo. And so that's the space you want to move into. So I really help clients. I walk them through that space of kind of hand holding of getting you to that shift where you can feel like you have one, you have a wardrobe that can reflect that mm -hmm. and then helping you embrace it. Okay. So if I, if I went through the process of doing that mental mind shift and embracing my mojo ness in how I put all my wardrobe together, would people be able to see that? Like would people say, yeah, she's got her, mo her, her mojo is who she is. She shows up like that. So that's why we do that. Right. So people can see right. us coming. <laughs> yes. Right. And they can feel your energy. They feel the difference too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll feel it because you're in your mojo. So you stand a little bit taller. And it's interesting. I was going to point out when you started talking about what mojo meant to you, you kind of, you know, you got taller, you got brighter, you know, <laughs> your energy. Yeah, I did. And so that's the same thing. You know, it just naturally happens. And so that's the energetic piece that you want to be be able to and feel great about it um, and, you know, capture that moment. And mm -hmm. you can create those moments more often because usually, you know, we're accustomed to feeling great, like maybe once a week, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, having that one outfit or, you know, a couple of things where you're like, I feel super in this. And then I'm okay with being mediocre for the rest of the week. <laughs> mm -hmm. So really transitioning to how about feel great every day, you know, so and you it doesn't happen overnight, but it, yeah. it, so you, know, you say you work with professional women mostly. So how can professional women um, onboard their own sort of brand you in this in this um, in this mindset that you're talking about? Because you know it would be easier for entrepreneurs to go and do it because their space is their space. But when you have a company culture to handle and deal with, how would that fit in for this type of work that you do? 
Right. Great question. So we deep dive into, so what we do is um, <clears throat> we have to identify the culture of your company and then your culture mm -hmm. and see where you can find commonalities. So you have to figure out, um, you know, also your values. So I'll give an example, right? So this isn't as, um, I'm sure this person probably expected me to give more a different advice, but I've had people sometimes who love, they're very creative. They um, enjoy doing more of a, like a business casual, they're colorful, but then they may work in a very conservative space because of the industry. And they're miserable because it feels like, you know, you're trapped in something, right? Yeah. And what I recommended to them, I, I felt like you, you basically have two options. You either find a company or a position that's more in alignment with your values, or you just stay there and feel miserable. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is there's a value misalignment because mm -hmm. it's not who you are. It's not what you love. You can't operate at your full potential because there's some, you know, discrepancies and big enough discrepancies where you feel it energetically and it impacts you. So what I would do is, you know, help them identify, are there some values that you really love and enjoy in terms of the culture? Mm -hmm. Can you pull that out and be yourself? Can we find ways to bring, you know, if it is, you know, are you bold enough to wear, if you love color, can we add in some colorful blouses to your look? You know, can we add in some funky accessories? Are there things we can do with your hair? You know, finding ways to, you know, work around some of stipulations, you know, the workplace may have so yeah. that you can still bring yourself to work. And sometimes that may mean you being a little courageous of being different. You're going to, you may stand out a little bit and that's okay. But if you're open to doing that, you'll feel better in the end because you know that you're being yourself, basically. So you're bringing yourself to work. So let's just say that you still want to keep your overall dress um, somewhat conservative. Mm -hmm. How else can we make our brand you pop? For if you still want to be conservative? Yeah, well, for instance, mm -hmm. I, you know, me, I, I gravitate to anything black, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you talked I'm, about that. I'm wearing some color today. I got gray on, right? I mean, <laughs> okay, it's, it's a step forward. <laughs> I lightened up a little, right? Mm -hmm. But how can I still use that those basic, basic colors that my mom just freaks out every time I put it on? My grandmother used to do the same thing. Girl, don't you do anything else except black? But I feel powerful in that color, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I feel yep. like I'm in my space. It's like I'm in a sh my shroud. But what else can right. I do to bring out my mojo-ness and not have to give up my color? Right. So, um, one, I think if you love it, that's so good that you know that and continue to wear it. So, a couple of things you can, like one, you wear, from what I've noticed, you wear red lipstick. So, that's something that's a little bit different and it contrasts well with black too. So, that's great. Mm -hmm. explore um hair how do you want to wear your hair and i know we talked a little bit about that how can you shift that to maybe be something that um feels good and courageous for you in terms of you know your style accessories your earrings necklaces rings bracelets those are all things that see you can do to add different dimensions and then the other thing that you can do is when you're wearing black it doesn't always have to be a plain black you can play with textures, you can play with lines, you know, you can do so many different things, even with a solid color that'll give you the variety that you may want. Um, the detail of it, you know, do you want something that's maybe a little, um, you know, with a lot of detail, but it's still black, then you're getting that um, variety, like I mentioned before, so you don't feel like you're wearing the same thing every day, Yeah, that yeah. you're, you know, pulling in different pieces of your personality, your mojo, um, your elegance, you know, and then of course, let's not forget shoes. Oh, well, girl, <laughs> shoes, right? <laughs> shoes, you know, they can shoes. make the outfit. <laughs> so you can definitely explore there and go bold. You can do prints, you can do um, 
uh, different, you know, types of fabric and the feel of it, the style of it. So there's a lot of options, even if you just like to wear the color black. So okay. I, I don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. And it's really about the energy you show up in these things, right? I mean, I see some people mm -hmm. in beautiful clothes, but they don't really pull off well because they don't own their energy. And so mm -hmm. people show up in jeans mm -hmm. and just blow everybody away because of how they arrived, right? Right. Right. Yes, 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 yes. And that's the part about being you, you know, wearing what you feel great in. So you said you love black, but maybe there's some people who feel black is too, you know, is dark for them. It makes them feel sad. Yeah. So they need to wear other colors. So you, and I, I encourage people, like, you can always admire something on someone else, but that doesn't mean you have to recreate it on you. And usually what it is that you are, you are attracted to is their energy. You feel their confidence. You feel, mm -hmm. yep. You're attracted to their confidence. You're attracted to how they feel in their clothes and you know how they're showing up. So you can recreate create that yourself just in your own way, and that's the important part too. Yeah. So true. You know, we were just talking about shoes, and I was at an event, and they had photographers doing stuff, and I see them snapping my feet, right? And I got really freaked <laughs> out by, about that. And I thought, I looked at the shoes. I, sometimes you forget what you're wearing, right? So I looked at it, I said, right. oh, I had on um, zebra prints across the, 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 the top of the shoe, um, an uh -huh. orange base, and a gold chunky heel. Oh. So I guess they've never seen that, right? Mm -hmm. And I had all black on. So I, I think my feet ended up on the um, pictures of the events. What, oh, and yeah. introducing Pamela's feet. Right. <laughs> God only knows what, what Pamela looks like, but we saw her feet. Right. <laughs> we love her shoes. We love what she's wearing on her feet. <laughs> the shoes make a statement. And I always look for shoes that make that statement and quality quality has to be there i'm I, if i can't yeah. afford it in the moment that i see something i wait right yeah yep. because the quality also says something i mean it has to because i mean if my thing is elegant i can't be elegant and i'm the energy of my stuff is saying not so much <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good yeah quality over quantity all the time all the time yeah. all the time all the time so, um, it's more efficient it's more effective do you find here um, the people that sometimes when you start working that with them, it's a little bit of a difficult issue to move them into a new place of being, um, making different choices for themselves? How easy or how difficult is it for people to let go of how, they, how they've seen themselves all of their life? Mm. Yes, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> usually what I do for every client is we start off with an assessment. And so what the assessment does is give, it gives them that mental time to walk through different steps in the phases to become prepared to go through the shift. Mm -hmm. Because I ask different questions that forces them to reflect, think about what they want, mm -hmm. who they are, where they're going, mm -hmm. you know, questions that are, you know, digging a little bit deeper into, um, you know, if you want to shift, what do you want that to look like? And how do you see yourself? How do you want to see yourself? Um, how, what would you like to project? So I walk them through that first. And that really, really helps to get them ready for a lot of the, um, the actual clothing, the releasing, the creating the new, the shopping for, you know, new. Um, without that, I think it would be really difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, you start off with yeah, baby, I've learned that over the years. <laughs> yeah, maybe with baby steps too, let's work on the hair. For me, it would be the hair, mm -hmm. you know, because it's so safe to pull it back and, and, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. So maybe for me, yeah. it would be about still have that sort of sleek look, but do different things with the sleek look. So I have to investigate that, right? How right. else can I yep. show up sleek? If sleek right. is the thing, what, can, what other ways can sleek be? Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Yeah, and being open to that too. And you know, hairstyles can go a long way when you're, shift, you know, when you're changing your style. Yeah. I recommend that too. You know, maybe it's that you add a little bit of color. Yeah. Um, maybe you get a cut. So there's different things you can do there as well um, and go get it professionally done if you want, you know, to get something a little bit different and different vibes. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes it is baby steps, but usually when I'm working with people, by the time they get to me, they're, they're, they're ready 
you know, you're never like fully ready, yeah. but they're, they're open. They're ready to be open for the change. And that's the important part. And that I can work with and guide them through it. Yeah. Yeah. If you've known me for any length of time, you know, I'm a girl about my wine. I love my wine and my wine glasses. And I noticed that you have something called the wine series. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. So the wine and wardrobe series, I created that a little over two years ago because I was hearing from my clients, they're busy working women that they want, you know, they didn't have time to connect with other women. They were always asking me like, Oh, Oh, I saw that you did this or you did this. Can you connect me with, you know, connect me here? And I just want to have fun and invite me to the next thing. And so I thought maybe I should create something to, you know, just bring women together and celebrate who we are and have a chance to talk about fashion and style in a safe space so that we can talk about our vulnerabilities and our frustrations and our challenges, um, but also do it in a fun way where we are getting out of our comfort zone and meeting new people. And so uh, I create that and I'm really proud that one thing I've added to that as well is that I work with all women owned businesses to host that production. So from the location to the, um, the wine vendor to um, the different sponsors, it's all women owned businesses so that mm-hmm. I, I thought it was important that they know there's so many businesses out here that support you yeah. in terms of your life, you know, things that you need in your life. Mm-hmm. where they're women owned and I know we always want to try to support each other so it was it just worked out really well for it to be a great platform for that yeah and um so it's been super exciting and really really fun so right. yeah and so right. basically kind of how it looks is that you know we do a little bit of chatting in the beginning we unwind from our day we learn about some wine you know you have glass of wine we eat a little bit and um I do I always do a custom uh, presentation on a different you know theme of clothing like the last one I did we talked about um, your work wardrobe capsule and there's time for questions it's very interactive so it's really just a good time nice nice so Char you're a very busy woman obviously and you're out there doing your thing loving it how do you keep your mojo flowing what are you reading what are you doing what how do you keep your energy high and, and clean and clear Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> you know, I think it's um, it's always learning, <laughs> always learning. So believe it or not, I am an introvert. So for me, it's always important for me to have quiet time. Yeah. And I find that in the morning, that's the best, you know, option. Getting up a little bit earlier, having some quiet time, time for prayer, time to journal, um, you know, set the plan for your day. Books, I love reading. So um, let's see what's on my Kindle that I've been reading right now. I've been reading, um, oh, geez. What is, um, I just lost the name of it. Mm, It'll come to me. But I have, I try to do a balance of, oh, one of my favorite books. I will say this though. I read it, I reread it a couple times a year. Is the um, Motivation Manifesto. Ah, by Brendan? Excellent. Yes. 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 That one is excellent. Um, but I love having, you know, books on my Kindle too, so that I can travel with it. Or if I have a down moment, I can, you know, read it on my phone. Mm -hmm. So keeping my mojo for me is really just focusing, making sure I have some quiet time, time for prayer so that I can always recalibrate and make sure that I'm really connected with myself and spirit and God. Very nice. Yeah. Time for prayer. Very important. You know, um, I wanted to share with the listening audience that, um, I'm taking uh, Mojo into a bigger space and we're going to launch the Mojo Club. And the Mojo Club is, well, a club (laughs) where people like Char will show up and it's behind the red rope, red velvet rope, and really unpack some of her wisdom. We don't have time here on these 30-minute segments. But how she can come and really dive deeper and share in a space for you know, people, even, you know, men might be there, who knows, to hear how to pull the essence of you out in a more expansive and expressive way. And that's so important. I mean, what she, what she teaches is a big part of your mojo power, your mojo essence, because how we show up in the world is how um, people understand our message. Mm -hmm. And we don't want confusion when we show up. We want clarity around these things. So I'm going to have some wonderful people just like Char bring their stuff to the club. So there'll be more information about the club um, 
as we go on, but I just want you to know that we're there. And I was so honored when Char said, right on, she's in it, she's there, mm -hmm. to teach and bring some really great wisdom and value to people who are wanting yeah. what she's so beautifully offering. So Char, how can we find you online? Well, you can, well, first, congratulations on launching, you know, getting that together. I think that's awesome work that you're putting into the world. Um, and I'm so honored to be a part of that. So where to find me? Um, you can always find me at my website, um, which is uh, charstyleandimage.com. And the and is spelled out. Again, it's charstyleandimage.com. And you can, I have the same name on Facebook as well as Instagram. Um, and on LinkedIn, I'm Char Dobbs. Char Dobbs. Char mm -hmm. Dobbs, you've been a real blessing here for us today. Thank you so much. And I just love talking to you. You, you know, Char and I have been talking offline a couple of times. She's down in the U.S. Where in the U.S. specifically? I'm in Minnesota. She's in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And the minute we connected and started talking, I knew, oh, there she is. And she's so far away. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm thankful, so grateful to technology. <laughs> yes. So we have to do things like this. It's amazing. And connect and interact and, and still do our thing. But I love coming across these types of people. And, and that's why I do what I do. So I can find them. And they can find me as well. And we'll do whatever we have to do to collaborate to get the word out that um, this is for whoever is looking for it. So Char Dobbs, thank you. And we'll see you again. I know that. And um, we'll see you on the other side of the velvet rope in the club. In the club. We're going to the club. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> love it. And love it. Love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so thank you. And to the Mojo Talk radio audience, thank you again for joining us here on another very deep dive episode and we're, and we're going to keep bringing you more such guests as um, we go along in the weeks to come. And I will be putting Char's information down in the show notes as we go so you can just click and find her really quickly. And I'll also be giving you some information on the club. <laughs> so thanks again <laughs> for joining us here on Mojo Talk. Thanks, Char. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Oh.